All right, guys, welcome to your wonderful, hopefully wonderful um, little kind of Q&A slash advice session on NB2. I'm going to first cover NB2 and um, what I generally did in terms of prepping for it. Priya is also um, my co-facilitator slash uh, moderator to make sure I, do, uh, you know, I don't start confabulating too much. Um, important thing to note, um, feel free to send questions to Priya. Um, she will answer them. She'll also like be available to like answer any questions during the open kind of Q&A session portion. Um, as always, I'm going to emphasize uh, this really important tidbit for NB2, which is make sure you guys um, know your anatomy very well. And that is the critical point. But um, before we kind of get started, my name is Kishore. I am a term four now um, med student who is currently dying in oncology and hematology. Um, Priya, feel free to introduce yourself. Hi guys, um, my name is Priya. Um, <clears throat> sorry, same boat as uh, Kishore, you know, dying in um, hematology and oncology, but we're striving there. And um, also just like another fun like thing, like you know, talking to you guys is kind of like a way for us to kind of not forget, but kind of like go away from what we're studying because so much there. But um, yeah, good, but good luck guys. Um, and you guys made it to MB, through MB1. So very proud of you guys. So. And that is a really good segue to say congratulations on getting through NB1 because seriously that module, especially that half of like NB or like one third of NB is ridiculous because it's not a concept that's very familiar. You can't just like walk into NB and be like, yeah, I know all the tracks. I know like what everything does. It's a lot of learning. Like think about it from back in the day when you guys started NB and they were like, here's a brain. And you're like, yeah, I can tell you what parts of the lobes and what they do. But like, then they started throwing in tracks. Like you guys came a long way. Just take a moment to appreciate that a little pat on yourself, you know, a little pat on the back, you know, never, you know, hurt nobody. So make sure you guys um, enjoy this weekend because you guys are in and for a long haul with NB2. And then of course three and a finally BSCE. I just want to emphasize that this is grind time. It's always um, similar to how I like to compare to dedicated for your step one. So it's kind of pseudo that level of atmosphere. But for now, um, let's kind of get this ball rolling. And if you guys see, I put in a lot of effort with these titles, okay? NB2, right? You see a dope meme, right? And your brain delete, releases dope a meme, right? It's perfect. It's beautiful, right? Don't worry. I just made that up. It's or I shamelessly stole it from Instagram. So either one works. As always, um, we run, here's the TPLG, um, a group of us. And obviously we are no longer affiliated with SGU and DES because we're trying to do our own little dealio thingamabob. Okay. Yes, that's a very technical term. I know. I fully acknowledge that. Um, but if you guys want access to our page as well as link to our drive, that you can find based off of scanning this code. That's always what I preface during all of my sessions. Um, we have a lot of good resources for your guys' term as well as other terms as well. So feel free to save it, bookmark it, do your thing um, so that you can always find it. All right. So congratulations, you made it through three weeks of um, torture. Sorry, I mean tracks, and you guys now officially are ready to learn your cranial nerves. Well, you're saying to yourself, I learned cranial nerves. Like, are you kidding me? There's more to them? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, there is more. Um, cranial nerves, right, like you imagined, are working in much limited location in terms of space, because remember, your body is a giant surface area like tracks if they were stretched out could go for miles and miles cranial nerves have much shorter kind of distance where they're working and going to so they sometimes take like they they kind of are like hitchhikers on a road right like they're like mm, maybe i'll just join this like crazy person who's going to las vegas like mm, maybe it's safe maybe it's not like who knows maybe i'll get a lesion here and i don't know like not be able to salivate for the next you know existence of my life. I'm just kind of telling you guys in general, like a lot of the presentations in terms of cranial nerves and what happens 
um, often run in parallel with each other because a lot of them are basically superimposed on top of each other. I'm going to have review sessions for you guys, hopefully outlining why um, it's so important, as well as a couple of the tracks. And guess what? You thought the tracks were done and you just have to forget all about it. Unfortunately, I hate to break the news to you. They come back both as cumulative as well as information that you're going to need um, specifically for NB2. And if you guys see, I put a lot of effort into these circle, triangle, and square. Um, don't worry, there's not a number associated with them. You don't have to, you know, get like 44, 45 billion, yes, uh, in, in order to pay off your med school loans. Sorry, that was just a poor way of me saying like, go watch Squid Game this weekend so that you can educate yourself. All right, the next thing you're gonna typically cover after you guys finish with your NB2, and I know this is a long haul kind of module, um, is behavioral sciences. And there's a reason why SU has scheduled it so that you have NB3 at the tail end, okay? Um, it has behavioral sciences and psychology. So luckily it's not like one of those like conceptually hard concepts that you're learning. It's just a lot of material once again, compounded. And the nice thing is that's when most of us started prepping for BSCE. I know it's a dreaded word, trust me. We will we'll address that um, together, okay? Next thing to note, um, the final and the last thing to get through term two is BSCE. Remember, it's a cumulative exam of term one and two. The distribution of it, I'm gonna cover in a little bit for now, just stick with me for NB2 and we're gonna get through this madness together. As always, what did I tell you guys? Um, Remember, you got to learn one, you got to do one, and you got to teach one, okay? That's my motto in terms of like learning it. I like shed my tears every day. And then I like do practice questions. That's me like doing practice questions. And then teaching is what I try to do slash facilitating during these review sessions. So that's my motto for every single module, okay? Um, the important things to focus in on is anatomy concepts, okay? Cranial nerves, you can memorize. You're going to memorize and then you're going to forget. I promise you, that's how I did. Like, I have no idea what trigeminal does anymore. Apparently, there's a neuralgia associated with it that we learned in um, term four, but like, we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, lesions, believe it or not, also make a comeback, not because of cumulative, but lesions that can happen at the cranial nerve level. You're like, what is Bell's policy? And why do I need to know that the facial nerve is involved with it? And why does my ears keep ringing due to Bell's policy? Trust me, you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, but it's really important and fascinating concepts because it works with everything that you are expressing out into the world in terms of facial nerves, in terms of movement of your face, expressions, it's fascinating material, but it's very dense. I put in a couple of resources that you guys can use um, to kind of prep yourself for it. As always, for those who are OPLG slash AEP leaders, you guys are freaking killing it already in terms of cumulative prep. Um, make sure you guys do start covering your term one and term two material whenever you guys can for those who aren't doing these sessions, okay? Important, important, important. Please start reviewing. I need to like drill it into your guys' head like a burr hole that a neurosurgeon often tries to do to relieve like, you know, um, intracranial pressure, okay? I like making random quirky jokes whenever I can about NB. All right, our individual approaches. I've already blabbed plenty. Let's take a moment and ask Priya what she did for NB2. Okay, um, so nothing like uh, too much like out of the extraordinary, kind of like what, um, Keish was saying, um, I did a lot of like, um, like it, it's gonna be like, I think linked at the end, I think he linked it. Um, I used the Utah Med um, thing, like website to like memorize like the cranial nerves and kid you not like, you know, as soon as I woke up, I would go to that website and like pick up like the first three or four nerves and kind of go through all like the, the entire pathway. And basically like, I talked myself through it and like, uh, I was like, okay, if there's a lesion here, what would the patient express and what would be the deficit and stuff like that. But that will come more naturally with like, you know, you guys are learning the um, different like, you know, um, <clears throat> Uh, what's it called? Um, I'm confounding right now. Um, the different, um, what's it called? Processes, yeah, processes and what they do essentially and go. Um, and so th that's the main thing I did. And there's also really nice um, PowerPoint that um, someone in um, 
Taco Core. I don't know if you know that DES, but um, they have a really nice PowerPoint with all the granulars and what they do, where they go through, what are the different like tunnels they go through and stuff like that. And I used that on the slide and then the Utah Med like right next to each other and then went through that. And that's how I practiced and that helped me so much. Um, and then I did all, all the MC, IMCQs, the grace questions, and a lot of like the other like outside resources that I did was like just the DES um, practice questions. Um, that's the main thing. Um, I whiteboarded away, um, so nothing new there. So whiteboard, like whiteboarding is life essentially. Um, and then that's pretty much it for um, uh, NB2. And um, what I did was, what really helped me was that, um, now this is extra, but uh, what I did was like for each like lecture, what I did like as a pre-read, I would like read through it and then basically condense all my notes into one page. So basically made one page for each lecture. So I would limit myself to like one word doc, um, like one word page um, and per lecture. Um, and so that way, like, because there's so many slides and so many material, so much material that it's like hard to go through like all the, you know, 50 million slides that they have. So kind of just condense it into one page and just read that, um, you know, daily. Um, that's what I pretty much did. Um, I was an, also an OP, uh, OPLG, um, like, facilitator as well but you know as time went by like my uh me and my co-facilitator we kind of like didn't have the time because there was so much but we tried to like um integrate our sessions there as well um and um yeah that's pretty much it what i did um and we're going to talk about bsc later on right this is just mb1 okay mb2 yeah yeah so yeah nothing too drastic that's pretty much that <clears throat> all righty um, that's really important. Do those questions, guys, because a lot of the questions for anatomy um, are so heavily integrated with your cranial nerves that there's no way you can learn them in isolation. Like you can sit there, memorize that the frontalis muscles of your face elevate your eyebrows and stuff like that. But like, there's no way you're going to spend time learning them and correlating them with cranial nerves unless you take that effort. So they really like to test it based off of the cranial nerves in terms of your um, neuroanatomy, as well as your like facial muscles and groups that you're working with. So make sure you guys review that. Um, fun fact, like the sternocleidomastoid comes back again with like full swing and they love asking questions about it because it's such an important accessory muscle that's involved in like both the pulmonic and the cardiovascular circulation system as well as like important in terms of like um, moving your face. So um, we're gonna talk about a lot of that in the review sessions. I basically did the one pager like Priya said, um, you guys know my notes. I'm gonna share those notes with you guys, my condensed notes for NB2. It has some of the tracks. Make sure you guys review the tracks from NB1 as well because they, they are really, they're brought back in with full swing. Um, you're gonna spend some more time covering the brain in terms of the nuclei. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys, you got to know those nuclei, especially based off of vasculature um, that could be potentially uh, disrupted. Remember your pica syndrome versus um, ICA and all of these things. Yeah, you guys probably forgot because you're like, I just took my NB1 exam. I'm trying to repress everything um, right now just forget about them, but they're going to be very important once again, because nothing in our body ever happens in isolation, especially with the cranial nerves, as well as the tracks, because they often appear together. So now the questions are going to be both in terms of like facial presentation in terms of the cranial nerve, as well as like what has happened to the tracks, right? So there's another layer added on, and it can be quite difficult for a lot of students to kind of compound that information. That's why I'm really emphasizing, take this weekend, blank out your mind, you know, um, and then starting Monday, go hardcore on this material because you need to start building on your cranial nerve as well as your tracks knowledge because they come together in a full picture. All right, I've done my job of scaring you guys. Um, let's move on to the next portion, which is the Q&A. And look, it's a little penguin. It's actually me as the penguin, but um, any questions? I'm gonna open the floor. If you guys want me to stop the recording, I can do that too. Whatever you prefer, just holler. Okay, in OSCEs, there's like a three second rule. If you cross a three second awkward silence, like you can never recover from that. So like, please, please save me for myself. 
Okay, I'll just um, basically reiterate what I like um, commented. So um, I feel like I never review past modules for exams. I just kind of like wing it um, and hope for the best because I, I just think Resume recording. Okay, welcome back. Um, I do apologize for the random internet connection um, issues. In terms of external resources, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um, in terms of NB2, the lectures weren't too bad. I know NB1 was quite difficult. A lot of people use a lot of external resources. I'm telling you, NB2 is a little bit better because I think it's just a little bit more organized in terms of how they kind of flow. That being said, there's always room for improvement. So I put together a little updated compiled list of external resources and practice questions and locations of what to do. Okay, just hear, hear me out. So the noted anatomist, the cranial nerve stuff, golden. He tells you where every foramen, every little like crevice that these cranial nerves flow in, into. There's the head and neck muscle and um, the overall lymphatics. Those are fantastic, high yield. And the entire head is also kind of like given in like full picture because you're going to get a professor um, who covers anatomy at SGU and all his slides are just going to be pictures. And those pictures have no words. And Priya knows who, which professor I'm talking about because we, we legit were like freaked out because it, it was just literally 40 slides of pictures and you had no idea what was high yield. So um, I went ahead and watched these videos and helped me identify which cranial nerve is associated with what muscle, what lymphatics I need to be aware of in terms of what can impinge on a cranial nerve. So once again, if I'm saying cranial nerve a bajillion times, it's because they emphasize that a lot in your NB2. Once again, Ninja Nerd, his whole neurology series, golden, watch it, whiteboard it, do what you have to do, make it stick because it's fantastic. In terms of CK Med, I really like this because he uses the Utah Med's cranial nerve um, kind of diagram to walk through all of this, okay? And if you guys go through that, it's very, um, very much in line with what SGU likes to ask in terms of where these cranial nerves run, what kind of systems that they kind of hitchhike their way to, to the actual target muscle. So really important, watch that video. There's an entire playlist on it. It's lovely. Okay, in terms of anatomy, I know a lot of people message me about anatomy. There's like a whole bunch of online free resources. I'm a very la lazy person. I'm like productively lazy. That sounds like a, like a paradoxical statement. I like to have everything like quickly available. So I just made like a one-time purchase of human um, Atlas. It's like the 2021. It's like the lowest amount of money you'll ever drop at uh, a resource because it's like 24 bucks um, and it has all of the information that you need. And it's a one-time purchase. It's not like um, your other anatomy resources where you have to pay um, like a subscription. So I still have it. I bought it in middle school because I knew I was wanting to be a neurosurgeon since like the day I was born. I'm just kidding. Um, it was it was like available for like five bucks on like iTunes. So I was like, mm, like I got some pocket money. Like I did my chores for the weekend. Like I paid for that. So like I was like, one day I'm going to be cool enough to use this. And he, look at me now using it once again. Now, in terms of Armando Hasudigan, loved his neurology video series. Um, he covers a lot of the cranial nerves as well. So make sure you guys um, review that, um, as well as uh, Geeky Medicine's um, OSCE video. I'm telling you, high yield for your OSCE exam that's coming up um, at the tail end of this kind of um, term. Okay, now I should have put a star or special something because the Utah Med cranial nerve video, um, as well as like the little interactive diagrams, beautiful okay it's 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 like you you need that big picture because SGU will present the slides as like isolated compartments and it's really hard for me as a person who likes really big pictures to like understand the tiny tiny details and make the big picture from there so this entire kind of cranial nerve video slash diagram kind of set helped me a whole bunch 
And as Priya mentioned, Utah Med's practice questions is also great. It's they can have like first order questions all the way to like a little bit more complex vignettes. So you can take a look at those. And uh, I'm going to pause this for a minute. Okay. Um, the other thing that you guys need to know is that Boards and Beyond has really good high level summaries for NB. Um, once again, feel free to use it if you guys have the subscription. If not, um, make sure you guys get that. When you guys get to year two for now, just stick with what you guys have. And then finally, Osmosis, there's a lot of free videos out there. You don't need to worry too much about it for now. Um, just make sure you guys um, have some good high level summaries because that's often hard to find. And, you know, as always, we have you know, review sessions hopefully planned for you guys between Brady, myself, and Lindsay. We'll try to make sure you guys have your bases covered. Alrighty. And that brings us to our final portion of our squid games. Okay, just kidding. Thank you guys for coming for the NB2 session. Now I'm going to cover BSCE. I'm going to stop the recording so I can save a different clip. <laughs>